you know, we, we often see business cases going from a five to 10 year period even. And when, when you start thinking in five to 10 year periods on a business case, um, it, it allows you to anticipate some of the problems that the customer might think, you know, might face into the future. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the IoT for All podcast presented by IoT for All, the number one publication and resource for the Internet of Things. I'm your host, Ryan Chacon. On today's episode, we have Gerard Lutz, the CEO of Caliper. They were formerly known as MIoT. They designed and manufacture a wide range of world leading innovative IoT solutions um, for companies to use and better measure their and monitor their own data, things like that. Very, very awesome company. They do a lot of cool stuff. And today we're going to be focusing our conversation around kind of um, working through some of the barriers that come along with IoT. So uh, really about understanding your customer's mindset, the importance of understanding the customer's problem and new problems that, that potentially arise throughout the development and deployment of an IoT solution, and the, the holistic considerations for um, or of the implications uh, that adding a new technology into the workflow could cause, um, and just kind of how to work through those and think about that kind of stuff. So very interesting, unique conversation because we haven't talked a lot about this in the past, so I think you'll get a lot of value out of it. But before we get into it, any of you out there are looking to enter the fast-growing and profitable IoT market but don't know where to start? Check out our sponsor, Leverage. Leverage's IoT solutions development platform provides everything you need to create turnkey IoT products that you can white label and resell under your own brand. To learn more, go to iotchangeseverything.com. That's iotchangeseverything.com. And without further ado, please enjoy this episode of the IoT for All podcast. Welcome, Gerard, to the IoT for All podcast. Thanks for being here this week. Thanks, Ron. It's great to be here. Absolutely. Um, our first thing I want to have you do is introduce yourself to our audience, quick overview about what the company does, and we'll go from there. So my name is Gerard Lewitz. I, I head up a company called Caliper. Um, Caliper has been around for about five years. Uh, we recently rebranded from MIT to Caliper in a nod to the old Caliper tool that enables you to measure things. Um, and yeah, Caliper is all about measuring things in new ways to enable people to have sensors at the extreme edge that allows you to get new insights of infrastructure. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, and um, for our audience out there, we have a few other videos we've done together to kind of dive more into the extreme edge, dive more into what is it you all do from a solution standpoint. So make sure you check those out. Um, so for today's conversation, we have a number of topics I think are interesting and for us to dive into. The first thing I wanted to do is just at a high level, get your thoughts on when you're working with a customer, um, and a lot of our audience out there works with customers in the IoT space, why is it so important to understand the mindset that the customer has, and and how can people approach that and do it better? Yeah, it's a it's a great question, Ryan. I think yeah, from from our perspective, step one is the mindset that we step into, it, uh, which which is to ensure that we we own the business case along with the customer. I mean, a lot of these business cases plays out over far lengthier periods of time. You know, we, we often see business cases going from a five to 10 year period even. And when, when you start thinking in five to 10 year periods on a business case, um, it, it allows you to anticipate some of the problems that the customer might think, you know, might face into the future and to make sure that you own that problem along with them. You know, so um, I think yeah, we, we always start off with, trying to understand the problem first, you know, trying to understand, you know, why is there a problem? What are they trying to hit um, on a KPI or whatever it may be? What What's their definition of success? Mm -hmm. And then you really got to entrench yourself as part of that customer's team to ensure that you um, own the problem alongside with them, not just for the launch and not just for the proof of value, um, but, but for the long run um, so that they can be successful in the end too. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, um, it's something I think that's often overlooked. And w when it comes to kind of building on that, um, you know, once you understand the customer's mindset and, and kind of how to approach it, what are, what are like the main next steps, in your opinion, to kind of help lead that early stage uh, into kind of success for um, for planning and getting ready for deployment? I, th I think from, from, from our perspective, we, we like to do proof of value right at the start. You know, we like to show that we can solve the problem at least once or twice or whatever that time period is that they require in order to, to convince themselves that we've got a, a theoretical solution in a, in a mm. practical environment. Um, and, and then, you know, then the transformation really starts to take place because a lot of these customers, if you take a customer in the water industry, for example, these are water experts. You know, they... They, they went to uni or wherever it may have been to make water better. Um, they didn't study um, 
IoT or study software or whatever it may be. So, right. so, part of, so a lot of that is, you know, making sure that, you know, we play an education role along the way too, um, that we help them with some of the scaling and transformation problems that they will face along the way. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, these organizations have to change a lot. You know, they've got all the same issues as us as tech companies where, you know, they're trying to attract talent. Sometimes they even competition for us for talent. And, and they've got to start building these new digital arms that um, that previously was never necessary. So, um, so for, for us, the next step then is to okay, start defining scale, but scale at a pace that allows the customer to deliver on their own transformation objectives um, and, and not overloading them um, at the same time too. So, um, and, and, and then obviously, you know, the, the hardest thing is probably to tell them about some of the issues that we anticipate with, with, what, with what they're doing. Um, because some of those things slows you down as a company, but accelerates you in the longer run. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it kind of ties into it. I'm curious, how, how does, uh, so we talked about the mindset, but there's also just understanding the problem that the customer faces, right? And and the problems that potentially could be created through, or co- you could come across throughout the, the development of the solution and the deployment. How, what is, why is it so important to kind of be able to put yourself in the shoes of not only the customer, but potentially the end user as well, to help identify and understand those problems before you get started? Well, it, it affects the entire design is this is the very short answer right if if the um if the if the problem is really big and airy um you, you know you, you can probably get away with a, a, a bit less accurate solution in the end um but a lot of the problems that we're solving are, are small problems but at multi at a, at a very big scale right and yeah. um that means that the the margin for error in the solution is is significantly smaller um you know and and it's not about us being legally or technically correct, it's about the customer then failing um, as part of his or her ambition to to change the organisation that they're involved with. You know, and I think, yeah, you know, from that perspective, it allows you to to think in the long term as opposed to just a short term gain. Because a lot of these a lot of these projects take take quite a time, quite a long time before they hit scale. So, um, I, for, so in short, you know, if you, if you don't if you don't think about the problem in the same way as the customer, and you don't understand all their variables, you'll come up with something that simply doesn't work for them. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Um, and, and when it comes to once you understand kind of the mindset, the problem, now you're going to be talking about picking the right technology for for mm-hmm. the use case. So. What, what do you think about when it comes to that kind of step of the process of understanding exactly what's needed on that front? Because there's going to be implement, Im, implications to adding new technology into an existing workflow that you're building a solution for, right? So what are those considerations that need to be taken into account? Um, well, I mean, look, let's start at the very practical side of things is, is simply about the installation process. You know, the, um, yeah, if you think about, say, farmers wanting to put new weather stations on their you know, on the on the um, you know, on their farms. I mean, you, you you've got to make the device easy enough to install just as a starting point, and then you've got to find a way to make sure that that device, the record of the installation, um, is captured, um, and that you've got a way to to um, support the customer in the longer run with it. Um, you know, so the technology choice is tremendously important. You know, you, you start even even down to the level of the plastic that you choose. You know the the right. plastic that, that, that you're choosing um, might not be sufficient for the use case. You know, um, Australia's got, got, got really harsh um, environmental conditions in the outback. The temperature on the ground can easily get 50, 55 degrees. We've got an ozone gap just off the coast of, of Australia, which makes the UV you know, quite strong. So, so you've got to go through every single detail and make sure that, okay, well, will this thing survive for the five to 10 year period? Um, and, and then, you know, network connectivity and, and how that plays out relative to battery life is a tremendously important thing again. Um, and, and then we haven't even hit the cloud, right? I mean, the, you right. just have to think about the SIM cards, how are we transporting the information over the over the LTE network? Um, is it a government entity that might have specific rules around, um, you know, data sovereignty? Um, mm-hmm. And then and then which cloud are, you know, is the customer the most comfortable with or, or the customer's contract is the most comfortable with to build these things off. Um, so, so it's, 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 it's really going as deep as you can. And then I suppose at the same time, knowing that the, the IOT is probably still in its dial up phase. We're, we're all making a lot of, dis, we're all making a lot of mistakes. So we've got to, 
<laughs> leave a bit of space for our own mistakes and leave a bit of space for the customer's mistakes. Yeah, for sure. And and kind of as it connects to the mistake side, I mean, that kind of makes me think of challenges that um, might come up. How do how does a company anticipate problems or challenges a company or a customer maybe hasn't even thought about or could be coming up? You know, and and I think a lot of times they're going to be relying on the the um, the company they've they've chosen to help build the solution to be thinking about, even though we might not have domain authority. Uh, on that side of, of the industry, we're still required to be thinking about the, or at least we're going to be leaned on to be thinking about anticipating certain problems that could come up around the process. How does, how is that challenge kind of faced and um, what advice do you have for people listening to this on how to kind of think about overcoming and, and kind of putting themselves in the best position to, to, to get through those challenges and problems that, that may come up? It's massively challenging because there's a lot of misinformation in the market and you know, a lot of a lot of vendors are still making their decisions around whether or not this is even an industry where they're going to stay in. You know, if you, if sure. you look at IBM and Google deciding that their IoT platforms will be shut down, I mean, those are very, very big names. You know, and um, that same type of thing is also happening at, um, you know, obviously at a smaller scale with companies like ourselves who are significantly smaller. And um, I think step one for me is to make sure that you've got a partner you can trust. Uh, and... Um, trust is an interesting one because, you know, trust in our, our book, we talk a lot about, you know, trust equals character plus competence. Um, yeah, so you've got to make sure that you've got people with the right character um, and but also people who really just knows knows their topic and knows what they're talking about at the first point. Um, and, and then I suppose, you know, from uh, my, my advice to, to end users would be, um, you know, remain open to, to some of the things that, you know, your vendors, your trusted vendors, um, are telling you because my single biggest concern with IoT is just that we haven't thought through what IoT at scale means. Uh, yeah. If, uh, yeah, I mentioned to you earlier that you know we've got one customer with potentially 1.5 million devices. You know, you can't manage 1.5 million devices in a linear manner. You, you actually have to manage that by exception, and you have to allow the machines to close the loop for you, as opposed to um, human intervention in the middle. So we've got to get really ready for machine-based decision and action to manage these things. Um, and, and, and I think having that longer-term vision, you know, having your data strategy sorted out right at the start, um, that to me is the, is, the key, is the key thing for the longer-term success. Yeah, definitely. No, that's, that's, that's great advice and kind of great things to think about. Now, uh, when we kind of, uh, another piece, not really related to technology or necessarily the problems, but there's, there's always the, the the business model side of it, right? And choosing the the appropriate business model to build. How do you approach that? How do you kind of help people think through not only the choice but also the building of the business model for a solution that you know requires one? Yeah, look if you, if you take a typical continuous improvement methodology, you know, step one is always to list out all your problems, you know, and and then to and then to to prioritize the problems relative to the um, yeah relative to to the cost of implementation or the difficulty of implementation and um, you know I think for us step one is always to go okay well let's let's list out the problems let's understand the value of that problem and let's see if we can solve that first problem with a solution as we start there's absolutely no doubt that there's additional benefits that comes from that you know we right. um, you know, one of the water utilities that we've worked with for example wanted to understand the pipe pressure in their system and um, because if the pressure is too high you start damaging the pipes that the water is going through um so we put some, you know, we put a couple of pipe sensors in there um, managing the pressure um in more real time and and then we you know, and, and managed to get that right um but then the unexpected um thing that happened from there was they they started realizing that the pumps that they're using are running too frequently so in effect they are burning electricity that they don't need to burn and that, and that was a completely unexpected business case benefit um, that came from the implementation of trying to understand the pressure in the pipe. And we see that quite often. We see that if you can focus on solving the first problem and the first problem gets you across the business case, and it's a very simple calculation. For me, the beauty about IoT is that you know, unlike you know, if, if you and I were deciding on buying a shirt today, you know, there's a lot of considerations there that's, that you can't really measure. Right. It's, it's not that clear why you're buying that shirt or why you're doing this or why you're doing that. Um, whereas IoT is simple, you know, the, the cost of the solution has to be less than the um, than the cost of the problem. 
right? And and so sort of if you can start off by by solving a problem that costs higher than the solution in the long run, not just at the implementation level, um, you're setting yourself up for success in the longer run because there will be unexpected benefits, no doubt. Right. Yeah, totally agree with you. Um, last question I have before we kind of wrap up here is, um, you know, we've kind of talked through mindset problems, um, picking technology, um, the challenges you might come across, the business model. And then we have now we have the use case, right? We have the use case ready to go. How do we, how does a company position themselves and position the use case itself in the best way to increase the likelihood of adoption of that use case what what is what is the approach there how do you kind of think about that well i think yeah in in, in all the industries that's trying to transform themselves they you know there's always stakeholders beyond beyond the um yeah beyond the, the project implementation need and you know for us it's very important to understand what the kpis are you know okay so what success do you need to show at which point um, and then we tie in with those um we tie in with those objectives to ensure that we can help the help the end customer achieve their personal KPIs. I mean, the 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 reality of this transformation is that it, it takes a lot of brave people in organisations to to try something different, you know. And um, we see it as our job to to assist them to be successful, um, yeah. because yeah. You know, and, and and look, it's not completely selfless, you know. In the process, we become successful too. But you know, as long as the customer is successful, we believe that we'll be successful, um, and. For, for us, it's just as simple as understanding that part of the personal individual or individuals involved with the project and, and, and the organization's um, longer term commitments to things like you know, net zero and so forth, which um, if we can tie into that and make and help the, the, the company transform for the better, um, I believe that we're on the right track then. Yep, I agree with you. Yeah, it's. Um... I think that's one of the things going to contribute the most to the growth of the industry is the adoption of use cases and successes people see in different industries that connect to them to encourage them to adopt more IoT solutions. And I think it's all the stuff we talked about today, the challenges, the problems, understanding the mindsets, the business model, all that kind of thing ties into that success. Um, and it's um, and I think as an industry, we're starting to see that more and more. But like you mentioned earlier, we still have a long ways to go. So um, definitely something to be kind of paying attention to and thinking through. And I think the advice you've provided today to our audience is fantastic. Um, a lot of our audience is is very much ingrained in the IoT space and looking for better ways to to succeed in, in the deployments and understand their customers, working with their customers, kind of growing those use cases, driving business and so forth. So I think this is a, a fantastic conversation to have um, for our audience out there who may want to kind of follow up, learn more about what you all have going on. Maybe just follow up with questions about this conversation. What's the best way they can do that? Um, well, first, first stop for us is to visit our new website. It's um, caliper.com. Um, that's K-A-L-L-I-P-R.com. Um, or you can follow us on LinkedIn too, um, or just reach out directly to us via the website or, or via LinkedIn, um, whatever is the easiest. Fantastic. Well, Gerard, thank you so much again for taking the time. Um, fantastic things going on at the company. I'm very excited to kind of follow along and see how you guys keep growing and progressing with all the stuff that's that's happening over there. Um, and would obviously love to have you back and, and talk further about other topics as, as things kind of continue on into next year. Great. Thanks, Ryan. And thank you for the conversation. Th thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching that episode of the IoT for All podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, please click the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and be sure to hit the bell notification so you get the latest episodes as soon as they become available. Other than that, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.